This video was made possible thanks to the support of our amazing patrons. We couldn't do this without you. Don't forget that you can support the channel for free and receive 10% off orders over $10 of Flipside Gaming by using the promo code AFFINITY at the checkout. Or if TCG Player and Magic Madhouse are more your thing, then be sure to place your order through our affiliate links in the description. Once again, at no extra cost to yourselves. Hello everybody and welcome back to another EDH gameplay video brought to you by Affinity 4 Commander. My name is Martin and today's video is a real blast from the past. Yes, this video comes from a simpler time, a time before face masks and lockdowns, the year of 2019. But that's enough of reminiscing of times gone by, let's get this video started by taking a look at those opening hands. I am playing on Mizzix of the Ismagus Spell Slinger deck, and keeping the opening hand of Soul Ring, Gedexian Probe, Stroke of Genius, Ristic Study, an Island, and Two Mountains. I am playing my Anye Falconrath Madness and Discard deck, and keep an opening hand consisting of Soul Ring, Faithless Looting, Stromkirk Occultist, Squee Goblin the Bob, Sanctuary of Eternity, a Swamp, and a Mountain. Will is playing his Dio-Chan Political Shenanigans deck, and keeps an opening hand containing Soul Ring, Bloodforged Battleaxe, Skittering Surveyor, Transmogrifying Wand, Chandra Fire Arsan, Endbringer, and Mountain. And finally Dave, who is brand new to magic, is playing Guy Red Conclave Exile. His opening hand is made up of Momentous Fall, Cinderglade, Gruel Turf, Myriad Landscape, a Mountain, and two Forests. Will wins the die roll, plays Mountain, and casts Soul Ring. Not yet finished, he casts Bloodforge Battleaxe, and passes to Martin. I also play a Mountain, and also cast Soul Ring. Lacking a Colas 2 drop, I pass the turn. I play an Island, and cast, you guessed it, Soul Ring. With nothing more to do, I end my turn. Dave plays a mountain and passes to Will without casting Soul Ring. I feel so bad for the poor lad. Will plays Arcane Lighthouse and casts his commander, Diochan Artful Beauty. Out of mana, he passes the turn. I play a mountain and cast Faithless Looting. I draw two, discard Stromkirk Occultist and Squee Goblin the Bob, and cast the Occultist for her madness cost. Unable to cast anything else with my one floating mana, I end my turn. I play a mountain and throw Ristic Study across the table before casting it. Happy with my turn, I pass to Dave. Dave plays Gargoyle Castle and passes the turn. Will starts his turn by casting Skittering Surveyor, allowing me to draw from my Ristic Study. He then searches library for a mountain, puts it into his hand and immediately plays it. Not yet finished, Will taps out to cast Star Compass, letting me draw once more. Moving to combat, he attacks me with his commander, dealing me a single point of damage, and ends his turn. In my upkeep, I return the Squee Goblin the Bob in my graveyard to my hand using his ability. I then play a Swamp and cast my commander, Anye Falconrath. Unlike Will, I pay for the Ristic Study Tax and activate my commander's ability. I discard a card, draw a new one, and then move to combat. Here I attack Alex with Stromkirk Occultist, dealing him 3 damage. My vampire's ability triggers, exiling insatiable gorges from the top of my library, and I pass to Alex. I play an island and pass the turn. Nothing suspicious to see here at all. Dave plays Sungrass Prairie and ends his turn. Bit of a slow start from the Rhino Summoner. Will begins his turn by casting Chandra Fire Artisan, paying one extra for my Ristic Study. Not liking the sound of this, I cast Mystic Confluence, countering the Fiery Planeswalker, bouncing Diochan to Will's hand, and drawing a card. Not too pleased with his brutal assault on his board state, Will moves to combat, attacking me with his Surveyor. I take one damage, and Will passes to Martin. In my turn, I move straight to combat, attacking Alex with my Stromkirk Occultist. He takes 3 damage from the attack, and I exile Desert of the Fervent with my Vampire Horrors ability. 
Next I move to my second main phase where I play the Exile Desert as my land for turn. I then activate Anya's ability, discarding Drown Your Temple and drawing a new card. Still not finished, I cast Squee, Goblin the Bob, paying one more for a stick study. Alex laughs at me for paying 4 mana for a 1-1 and I pass the turn. I start my turn by casting my commander, Mizix of the Ismagus. Next I pay 2 life to cast Cadexian Probe for its Phyrexian mana cost, choosing to peek at Martin's hand. Satisfied with the information I've obtained, I draw a card, gain an experience counter and play an island. With nothing more to do, I end my turn. Dave plays Exotic Orchard and once again passes to Will without casting anything. Uh, are you doing okay there, mate? Will casts everyone's favourite ox producing removal card, Transmogrifying Wand, which enters with three charge counters. Why this thing doesn't see more play, I'll never know. It's pretty much a repeatable Pongify. I draw a card of my study and Will equips his Blood Forged Battle Axe to his Surveyor. Moment to combat, he once again attacks me, and I declare no blockers, taking 3 damage. The axe ability triggers, making a copy of itself, and Will moves to his post-combat main phase. Here he activates his wand, targeting Mizzix with its ability, and I respond by casting Disallow, countering the ability. I gain an experience counter, and Will passes the turn. I begin my turn by moving straight to combat, attacking Alex with my Occultist and Dave with Squee. Alex takes 3, Dave takes 1, and I exile the top card of my library, revealing it to be a Chrome Refuge. Next I move to my second main phase, play the exiled land and gain a life. Not yet finished, I activate Anya's ability, discarding Violent Eruption and drawing a card. Anye untaps, given that the discarded card had madness, and I cast the instant dealing 2 damage to Mizzix and 2 damage to Skittering Surveyor. Alex draws a card, both creatures are destroyed, and I end my turn. I play a mountain, consider my options, and pass a day without casting anything, which is still not suspicious in the slightest. Dave plays a plains and finally joins in the game by casting Thragtusk. Nice of you to join us after 5 turns. He gains 5 life from the BCTB, Alex draws a card of his study, and Dave passes the turn. Will starts his turn by casting Pia and Kieran Nalar, paying 1 extra for Ristic Study. He creates 2 1 1 Thopter tokens of flying, equips his battle axe to one of the aforementioned Thopters, and ends his turn. Martin responds to this by tapping his commander, discarding Big Game Hunter to draw a card. He untaps Anye cast the Hunter for its Madness cost, and pays one extra for Ristic Study. Martin destroys Thragtos with the Assassin's ETB, creating Dave a 3-3 beast to replace it, and then activates Anya's ability once again. He discards a card, draws a card, and then proceeds to his turn. In my turn I move straight to combat, once again attacking Alex with Strong Coco Cultist. No responses are declared, and before damage I tap Anya, discarding Stensia Masquerade, and drawing a new card. Anya untaps, and I cast the discarded enchantment, paying one extra for Ristic Study. Damage then occurs, Alex takes 3, and I put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on my Vampire Horror. I then exile the Murderous Compulsion on top of my library, which sadly isn't very helpful to me right now, and pass to Alex. Alex responds to this by tapping out and casting Stroke of Genius, where X is 4. He draws 4 cards, wishing that he still had his commander out, and moves to his untap step. I play an island, discard down to 7, and once again pass without casting anything. You have the most interesting turn. I know. Dave plays Naya Panorama and casts his commander, Guy Red Conclave Exile. He pays the one for Ristic Study, creates a 4-4 Rhino token with Trample, and then moves to combat. Here he attacks Alex with his Beast, to which Alex responds by casting Supplant Form. He targets Gyred with a spell, and I respond by activating Anya, discarding Muck Drub and drawing a card. Anya untaps, and I cast the adorable little creature, paying an additional mana to the study. Supplant Form's target is changed to the Drub, bouncing it back to my hand and creating Alex a token copy of it. Deeply annoyed with my interference, Alex declares no blocks, taking 3 damage from the attacking beast. Out of mana, Dave then ends his turn. 
Will equips his Blood Forge Battle Axe token to the Thopter that is holding the original axe, and then moves to combat. Here, he attacks me with the Flying Machine, dealing me 5 damage, and creates two more Battle Axe tokens. I forgot just how still that card can get. In his post-combat main phase, Will recasts his commander, paying the one for Rhystic Study, and then passes to Martin. Martin responds by discarding a land to Anya's ability, drawing a new card, and then moves to his turn. I begin my turn by playing a Swamp, and then move to combat. In a shocking turn of events, I attack Will with my Occultist, and he declares no blockers. Before damage, I activate my commander's ability, discarding Distemper of the Blood and drawing a card. Anya untaps, and I cast the discarded card, paying one extra for Arx's study. My attacking creature gets plus 2 plus 2 in trample, and damage then occurs. Will takes 6 damage, I put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Vampire Horror, exile a land of her ability, and proceed to my second main phase. Here I activate Anya once more, discarding Alm of the Vein, and drawing a card. I untap my commander, cast the Alm, pay 1 additional mana, and drain Will for 3 life. Still not finished, I cast Cathartic Reunion, once again paying the Rhystic Study Tax. I discard Anger and a land, draw 3 cards, and with nothing more to do, pass the turn. I play a Mountain and cast Baral, Chief of Compliance. Next, I cast Mob Rule, choosing to gain control of all creatures with power 3 or less, and Martin responds by tapping Anya. He discards Nightshade Assassin, draws a card, untaps Anya, and casts the discarded Assassin for her madness cost. He pays one for my study, and reveals a single black card from his hand to give Diochan minus one minus one, destroying the Artful Beauty before I can steal her with my spell. Not bad, really. Mob Rule then resolves, and I gain control of all the creatures on the board apart from Dave's Rhino, Martin's Occultist, and Will's Axe-wielding Thopter. Moving to combat, I attack Martin with all of my creatures, and create another 3-3 beast with Gyrid's ability, which I have entered attacking Martin as well. Unable to block, Martin takes 16 damage, and I forget to exile a card with Stromkirk Occultist's ability. Oops. Pleased with the damage I have dealt, I return everyone's creatures to their respective owners, and end my turn. Dave plays a forest, and casts Simora Tandris. Alex draws a card from his study, and Dave moves to combat, where he attacks me of his commander, and his beast, and Will of his rhino. Gyrid's ability triggers, creating a 4-4 rhino that enters tapped and attacking Alex, and nobody declares any blocks. Will and Alex both take 4, I take 5, and Dave passes to Will. Will starts his turn by destroying Amara with a wave of his transmogrifying wand gifting Dave with a 2-4 Ox token in the process. Next, he casts Mana Geode, letting me draw with my study, and scries the top card of his library to the bottom. Will then attaches his two unequipped Blood Forge Battle Axe tokens to his Axe-less Thopter, and moves to combat. Here, he attacks Martin with one Thopter, and Dave with the other, dealing them both 5 damage, and creating four more Blood Forge Battle Axe tokens in the process. Honestly, just how many axes does one person need? Satisfied with his axe collection, Will passes the turn. I play Temple of the False God, and then move to combat. Here I attack Dave with Stromkirk Occultist, which he blocks with his ox, taking 1 damage thanks to my Occultist Trample. My Occultist triggers, exiling a land, and I put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Vampire Horror thanks to my enchantment. With nothing more to do, I end my turn, to which Alex responds by casting Mystical Tutor. He searches his library for Volcanic Visions, puts the sorcery on top of his library, and proceeds to his turn. I play a mountain, and cast the Volcanic Visions that I just tutored for. I target the Mystic Confluence in my graveyard, and Martin responds by discarding Archfiend of Spite, and drawing a card with Anya. He untaps his commander, casts the Demon Fred's Madness cost, and pays one extra for my study. I really wish he'd stop doing that. My visions then resolves, I put Mystic Confluence into my hand, and each of my opponent's creatures are dealt 5 damage. Archfiend of Spite's ability then triggers, and I choose to lose 5 life rather than sacrifice 5 permanence. 
With my life total looking dangerously low, I pass to Dave. Dave begins his turn by casting Flame Rush Rider, paying one extra for Ristic Study. With nothing more to do, he passes the turn. We'll cast Angrat's Marauders, allowing me to draw a card for my study. Out of mana, he ends the turn. I play a mountain and then move to combat. I attack Alex with my demon, to which he responds by casting Mystic Confluence. He chooses to return the Archfiend of Spite to my hand twice, just to be sure, draws a card, and I move to my post-combat main phase. Here I recast my commander, paying one more for the study, and pass to Alex. I play an island and recast Mizzix of the Ismagus. Keeping a nice supply of mana open, I pass the turn. Dave plays a planes and recasts his commander, paying the one for Ristic Study. He makes a 4-4 Rhino, moves to combat, and attacks me with his rider. I respond by tapping Anya, once again discarding Archfiend of Spite and drawing a new card. I then cast the demon, paying the Ristic Study attacks, and block Flame Rush Rider with the winged monster. The attacking warrior is destroyed, and Dave chooses to take 3 damage from the demon's ability. Sad to see his creature go, Dave ends his turn. Will starts his turn by casting Chaos Wand, adding yet another magical stick to his arsenal. He pays one extra to prevent me from drawing, and then activates the wand, targeting me. I reveal the top card in my library to be Time Warp, which Will casts, and I then draw a card from Rhystic Study. Unable to do anything else, Will moves to his extra turn. Here he plays Temple of the False God, and activates Chaos Wand, once again targeting me. I reveal the next card in my library to be Logic Knot, which is really not helpful to Will right now, and Will cuts Goblin Matron. He searches the library for a Goblin Welder, casts the creature, paying one for the study, and passes to Martin. Martin responds by tapping his commander, discarding a land, and drawing a card before moving to his turn. I play a Swamp, and Will notices the time, realising that he should have set off for home already. Oops. Rather than scooping, Will hands his deck over to the nearest available person, and that lucky individual is revealed to be... Jacob! Let's change the overlay, shall we? Much better. Anyway, I continue my turn by moving to combat, once again attacking Alex with Archfiend of Spite. Alex responds by casting a cheeky vapor snag, and I respond to this by tapping Anya. I discard Muckdrub, draw a card, untap Anya, and cast the beast for its madness cost. I pay one extra for the study, and Alex responds to this by casting Time Stop. Not finished adding to the stack, I activate Anya once again, this time discarding Curse of Fool's Wisdom. I draw, untap my vampire, and cast the curse, paying one extra to have it enchant Alex. That'll teach him. No, it won't. With no further interruptions, Time Stop resolves, and all spells and abilities still in the stack are exiled. Unable to do anything else, I pass the turn. I draw, losing 2 life to Martin's curse, and Martin gains 2 life in this way. Next, I cast Finale of Promise where X is 10, causing the rest of the table to wince in terror. I gain experience counter, and cast Supplant Form and Mob Rule from my graveyard, gaining for the 2 experience counters in the process. I return Jacob's Marauders and Welder to his hand with the first spell and its copy, and decide not to bounce anything else, given that I'm about to steal everything with Mob Rule anyway. I create token copies of the no longer present Pirate and Goblin, and select both modes of Mob Rule thanks to the copies I've created of it by my finale, gaining control of everybody's creatures. Man, that feels good. I mistakenly search my library for a goblin with Goblin Matron, but I'm unable to find one, so it doesn't really matter much anyway. I then reveal the top card in my library to be capsized, but cannot for the life of me remember why I did this. Darn you 2019 Alex, you absolute potato! Moving to combat, I attack Martin with Gyred, my beast, and Archfiend of Spite, and attack Dave with Anya, Goblin Matron, Angras Marauders, Goblin Welder, and my Ox. Gyred's ability triggers creating a Rhino token that I have entered tapped and attacking Dave, and with no creatures to block, both Martin and Dave's life totals are reduced to zero. Thank you, Angras Marauders, for your double damage effect. 
a huge portion of my board pops out of existence with the two players' departure, and I move to my end step. Here, I return Jacob's Matron to him, play Glacial Chasm, and sacrifice a mountain to the land's ETB. Finally finished with my shenanigans, I end my turn. Jacob plays Great Furnace and replays Goblin Welder, paying for the Rhystic Study Tax. Next he casts Immolation Shaman, also paying the 1, and passes the turn. Alex responds to this by casting Pull from Tomorrow, where X is 6. He draws 6 cards, discards a card, and proceeds to his turn. In my upkeep, I choose to sacrifice Glacial Chasm rather than pay 2 light to its cumulative upkeep and play an island. Next, I cast Mystic Retrieval, returning Time Stop to my hand, and then recast the Retrieval for its flashback cost. This time, I return Mystic Compliments to my hand and move to combat. Here, I tap down all of Jacob's creatures with a cheeky cryptic command and attack Jacob with my Marauders, Rhino, and Beast. Knowing that I have a full hand of cards, including at least one counterspell, and a card that ends the turn, Jacob decides to accept his fate, taking lethal damage from my attacking creatures. Well, that's it for another game. I hope that you enjoyed seeing the Spellslinger deck win with combat damage. Crazy. Don't forget that you can help to support the channel in four quick and easy ways. Liking this video, subscribing, hitting the bell icon, and leaving us a comment. I read every one. And if you really like our content, then be sure to check out our Patreon page for exclusive rewards for as little as a dollar a month. There's a link in the video description. Alex and I are actually in the process of editing some games that we had of our patrons, so be sure to keep an eye out for those in the coming weeks. Well, that's it for now. Until next time, stay safe out there.